we will be going over how to use the Instrument Landing System ILS and the Automatic Carrier Landing System ACLS in the Tomcat, as well as how to set up these systems in the editor for use in a mission. However, before we start I will go over how to use TACAN to help get yourself into the correct position to start your ILS or ACLS approach. If you're familiar with TACAN navigation already, you can skip ahead to the timecode shown on screen or linked in the description. TACAN Starting with TACAN, Tactical Air Navigation. This is a radio direction and range finding system. We will want to use it to get ourselves behind the fleet so that we are in a good position to start our approach. First, we will need to tune our TACAN radio to the carrier. The frequency can be found on our kneeboard, opened with right shift K, and you can change pages with these square brackets. The frequency is also often included in the mission briefing. Now set the TACAN radio to the carrier by rotating the dials to the same number, starting with the units, tens, and then hundreds. Set the TACAN radio to transmit receive. This will give us bearing and range. Ensure you've got your TACAN radio control priority set to the correct seat by cycling the selection switch between pilot or RIO NFO as desired. Alternatively, you can ask Jester to tune the TACAN by selecting navigation, TACAM, tune tactical, and select the carrier, in this case, Stennis. Roger. With the TACAN station tuned, set your HUD to Cruise and the steering command to TACAN. On your HSD, you will now see on the outer edge an arrow pointing outwards, indicating the direction towards the TACAN station, and a plus indicating the opposite. On the top left, you will also see our range to said TACAN station. This is also displayed on the compass beside the display on the right. This is available even when other navigation sources are selected for the HSD. We want to approach the fleet from behind. For this, we need to know the base recovery course, or the heading the carrier is travelling. This should be included in the mission briefing, or you can find this out from the F10 map if available, by selecting the carrier on the map and reading its heading in the bottom left. If it is not included, make sure to note the carrier's heading before you take off. Hopefully, it will maintain the same heading for the duration of the mission. Next, we'll input the base recovery course onto our HSD by rotating the course knob to match. You'll see the needles in the center rotate to reflect this. Now, we have to fly ourselves behind the carrier. The easiest way to do this is to simply follow the outer arrow towards the fleet and then make a turn to the opposite direction of your intended course, either left or right. Keep an eye on your range and as the TACAN arrow reaches your intended course needle, turn towards the fleet and you will find yourself behind them, roughly on the base recovery course, ready to start the next phase. Ideally, you want to be about 15 to 20 nautical miles behind. If you are too close, turn toward the plus symbol instead, following the reverse of your needles until you've got the distance and then turn around. Now we're in position to start our approach. Instrument Landing System We'll begin by going over the ILS approach. This is a skill you will require in order to set up an automatic carrier landing approach. However, during an ACL approach, you would be following the datalink guidance rather than the ILS. More on that, however, in the ACL section. The ILS channel should be included in the mission briefing. We'll tune the selector knob to the correct channel and ensure that the ILS system is powered on. Now, we'll set the HUD to landing mode Set the HUD and VDI to ILS by moving their switches away from ACL. And finally, select the steering command to the AWL slash PCD. You should now see a set of needles on the HUD and the VDI, guiding you towards the correct height and heading to the carrier. Make sure you have your TACAN tuned to the carrier, as you'll want to reference this during your approach. 
you want to centre both sets of needles by steering the aircraft towards them. Height is simple enough, simply fly your aircraft up or down to meet it. Ease yourself into position and remember that the ILS will guide you onto a constant descent. Heading however is a little more tricky. When you see the needles crossing towards the centre, you should ease yourself out of the turn, aiming to be facing directly towards our TACAN signal by the time our needles reach the centre. A lot of people struggle here by overdoing the turn and ending up oscillating from one side to the other. Avoid turning left or right of your TACAN direction by more than 10 degrees, otherwise you can find yourself chasing the needle left to right, never reaching or holding your intended heading. You will find yourself slipping from side to side requiring constant attention to maintain position. Do not use large corrections, instead use a small gentle turn towards the needle and chase it back to the centre. Use your TACAN bearing to help you see how far you've turned away from your intended heading. As you reach around 10 nautical miles I suggest slowing down, dropping flaps, hook, air brake and gear and then getting yourself on speed for landing. You can also use the auto throttle at this point if you wish. Now you simply follow the needles all the way to the deck, switching visually to the ball and using that as reference once you get within visual range. That was a three wire, nice. Automatic carrier landing. Now you understand the basics of flying the approach, we'll cover how to enable the automatic carrier landing system. This is more or less the same as an ILS approach, however you hand off control of your aircraft to the carrier during the last 4 miles all the way to the landing. Unlike ILS however, we are guided by the data link rather than an ILS beacon. This can also be used for a manual approach if you wish to. So let's get ourselves set up. This time the Rio will need to configure the data link. If you have Jester, this is achieved by selecting data link, set host, and then selecting the carrier, again this time the Stennis. If you've got a human Rio, you'll need them to tune the data link panel to the carrier. The frequency is found on your kneeboard, opened with right shift K. Then press the square brackets to cycle the pages. On the right panel, make sure that your data link is switched on and that it is set to tactical. Set your frequency to match the carrier. Note that the first free is implied and is printed on just before the dial. The same is true with the decimal point. Next, ensure your radar beacon is powered up. If the data link is configured correctly and the beacon on, you'll see a green light on this panel when you are in range. The radar beacon is used as a reference point by the carrier to directly guide your aircraft onto the deck. Meanwhile, the pilot needs to set up their displays, set the aircraft to landing mode, set the steering command to AWL slash PCD, and ensure that your HUD and VDI are set to reference ACL. We now need to configure the autopilot on the autopilot panel. Select the ACL channel to on, and switch the autopilot to engage. This does not actually engage the autopilot, but rather readies it for activation later. You'll see the light AP ref beside the VDI to indicate this. During our approach, you'll need to reference these caution lights, so we will explain them now. Landing check. This indicates that the carrier is ready to use the ACL and you should prepare yourself for handover by keeping the needles centred. ACL ready. The carrier has acquired our aircraft and is transmitting guidance information. AP CPLR. We are now ready to hand over control to the carrier and ACL. This is engaged by pressing the nose wheel steering button. Command control. The aircraft is now under control by the autopilot and the ACL system, governed by the carrier. 10 seconds. 
You are roughly 10 seconds from landing and the system is now correcting for the carrier's movement. Tilt. The datalink has not received a signal for the last two seconds. Be prepared to take manual control of the aircraft as connection may have been lost. Voice. This indicates that the aircraft and carrier are not ready for ACL and you should use normal voice procedures. You will see this active until about 6 miles away from the boat. Auto throttle. Caution that the auto throttle system has been disengaged. AP ref. As mentioned before, the autopilot is selected and armed. It is now awaiting activation by pressing the nose wheel steering button to give the autopilot its frame of reference. You're now set up. Fly exactly the same approach as you would for ILS. Once again, switch your aircraft to the landing configuration by at least 10 nautical miles. However, you should now engage the auto throttle as this is a required part of the ACL system. With the auto throttle engaged, Remove your hand from the throttle to avoid accidental disengagement. The throttle will automatically adjust to maintain the on-speed angle of attack for you. Use slow and gentle pitch inputs to adjust your height and avoid making large changes as it will throw the system off. I recommend binding the auto throttle key somewhere as it can be difficult to find and press whilst flying. Continue to follow the needles and keep an eye on your range and the caution lights. As you pass 6 miles you will see landing check light up. As you reach 4 miles you will see the ACL ready light. At this point you should ensure that your needles are all centred and then press the nose wheel steering button. You should now see the CMD control light lit. The carrier will now guide your aircraft onto the deck automatically so you can sit back and watch. Remember to keep an eye on the system. If for any reason the ACL disengages or starts to become unstable, you'll need to take manual control and either fly the approach yourself or wave off. With that, the ACL will deliver you nicely onto the deck, even in the worst visibility. However, there are a few limitations you should be aware of. Do not engage the ACL if you are not roughly centred on the needles as the autopilot can be a little bit rough and may throw you off course trying to correct for it, requiring you to take manual control to recover control of the aircraft. The system does not fare well in winds and turbulence, requiring a manual approach during these situations. You should also avoid touching your throttle or stick to prevent unintentional disengagement of either the autopilot or the auto throttle systems. And finally, ACL does not advance the throttle to military power on touchdown, so you must do this yourself. Otherwise, if the system bolters, you might find yourself taking a swim. So with that, you're now prepared to perform an automatic carrier landing for yourself. Mission Editor Setup Now that we're familiar with the systems, I'll quickly cover how you set up these in the editor for your missions. First, we'll need to place a carrier fleet. Place your carrier and name it. Then proceed to add any additional units as you wish. Add a waypoint and then set the speed. You should have the fleet sailing into the wind. Now select waypoint 0 and open up the advanced waypoint actions. Click add, perform command, activate ICLS. This is for our ILS channel. Select a channel number as desired and make sure to select the unit as the carrier you named earlier. Next, TACAN. Again, click add, perform command, activate TACAN. Select the channel you desire and set the unit to the carrier once again. You may also wish to enter a 4 letter call sign, although this will only be visible on the FA-18 Hornet when tuned in. Make sure you record the fleet's heading for the Base Recovery Course, or BRC, the ICLS and TACAN channels in the briefing for people to reference when flying your mission. 
You do not need to configure anything for the carrier data link to be enabled, simply reference your kneeboard in flight to get the frequency or ask Jester to do it for you. And that's all there is to it. I hope you enjoyed and take care. Great approach man, three wire.